Welcome, everybody. It's morning here in Hui Ai, Thailand. And what I decided I was going to do here is I wanted to make a video to show people who are really, really overweight like me an easier way to exercise. Now, what I'm doing here in the pool is I'm just warming up. I just got in. And what I really want to do is I do these laps around the pool. Now, this pool is about 25 feet by 10 feet. Yeah, 25 by 12, I guess, is closer to it. But as I'm doing these laps by a pool, the first thing I start to do is I try to keep my rear heel on the bottom of the pool as I step forward and I stretch the back of my calf muscles by going forward and keeping the heel down as long as possible. As I loosen up the back of the calf muscle, then I end up eventually here, I'll start lifting up with my toe and doing toe raises basically like this. Now, you think, well, you're in the water. Well, as much as I weigh, even with some buoyancy, I'm still doing a one toe toe raise on, <laughs> if you don't think I'm heavy, try lift me out of this pool. It's still a lot of weight. Now, I've got really strong calves, and one of the benefits I'm going to have when I lose all this weight, I think, is I'm going to have really strong legs. Now, I had really strong legs back when I was a teenager and 20 years old, and part of the reason for that is just I was built that way. I always had strong thighs, and big calf muscles. I don't know. It just... I didn't work on it, it just sort of happened. So as I do this for about an hour and a half every day, uh, I'll start stretching that back muscle, stretching that back muscle, keep, keep that heel on the floor. Keep the heel on the floor of the pool. Now this pool comes right up to the bottom of my neck, which is just perfect. And the whole pool's that way. Now, I know not everyone has a pool, you know, 10 foot from their back door like this. But a lot of the people here going carnival in Thailand again, a lot of people here, they live in condominiums. And these condos all have pools in them. And some of them have amazing pools. I mean, instead of doing laps on 12 foot by 25 foot, these things, they're, uh, those pools, I've seen them where they're 200 yards long. And the, they wrap around between various buildings and stuff. So, you know, there may be a way that you can find access to a pool where you can exercise a little bit better. And, uh, by the way, walking through neck deep water is not always easy it it just is uh well there's a resistance to it now i'm still favoring my right arm where i injured it by having that chair collapse at the macro store but I will say thank you for all the well wishes. It is getting a little better. And uh, it sort of floats on top of the water here. Let me show you. And that way it gets a little bit of relief by lifting it without me having to strain to lift it. It sort of does it on its own. But uh, the reason I'm making this is everybody says, well, Walk to lose weight. Walk to lose weight. Now, let me tell you something. When I'm walking and carrying my full 300 and 
I don't know, 50 pounds or whatever it is right now. Uh, that really is, is a job. I mean, that, doing a long walk, you know, getting 20,000 steps in a day or something for me, that would be a lot. So walking where, let's say, I don't weigh 350. Let's say I, my body thinks I weigh 200 or 175 or 225. I don't know what the calculation is for that because not all my body is in the water. Only below my armpits is in the water, maybe. Or if I can get down like this if I if I bend my knees and go lower, but. Typically, it's right at, under my armpits is where the height of the water is. We haven't had much rain lately, so the water has gotten a little lower. If it doesn't start raining soon, I'm going to have to add a little water to the pool because of evaporation. Now, not everybody's fortunate enough to have this pool. I sought it out. I didn't saw I didn't seek it out for this exact purpose. I really thought I was doing it because when it's hot outside, it's just really nice to get in the pool for a little bit. Sometimes you come home from what, doing what you want to do and you just want to strip off your clothes and get in that nice water. Now the temperature of this water, let me go right over here. We bought this new pool cleaning kit because the pool cleaner said our kit sucked. And so we bought it. And it comes with this little thermometer here. So it is saying it's 84 degrees Fahrenheit the water is. Now I'm sure as we get closer to summer months, and by the way, the Thailand's meteorological no, Thailand's meteorological department has officially declared their hot season, hot and rainy season, to have begun, and that was this last week. They claim that they see for coming. This year, a lot of places, including Bangkok, will be seeing temperatures of 44 degrees Celsius. Now, for those who can't calculate Celsius to Fahrenheit in your head, I've got an easy way I was taught to think about it. You take 44 and you multiply it by 2, which is 88. Take 10% of 88 and subtract it. So... 10% of 88 is roughly 9, so you get 79. Now you take 79, you add 32 to it, and that's 111 degrees Fahrenheit. So 44 degrees Celsius is about 111 degrees Fahrenheit, which is nothing to sneeze at. Now this is during the rainy and the humid season. So there's going to be a time when you come back home here and you just say, whew, it's hot. It's, it's hot, it's sticky and everything. But that pool is going to feel great. So that gives you another chance to exercise. Now, I'm only doing this for like an hour, hour and a half. And I tried to get out earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon so that I don't sunburn myself too bad. After I've been out here for about half an hour, I will start doing shorter laps and just turning more often and try to stay in the shady side of the pool. We have shade in the pool to about oh, 11, 11.30. We've got pretty good shade in the pool. And then shade starts coming back in the pool because of the garage shading the sun to a bit and we get that in the afternoon so I can always do an afternoon session if I'm interested. 
Now this is a regular pool. It's got chlorine in it. This is not a saltwater pool. There are a lot of saltwater pools here in Thailand. To be honest, I don't know the benefits of having the saltwater pool versus the chlorine pool. I'm not sure there are. But as I exercise here, by the way, when I'm not making a video and when my right shoulder isn't recovering from that fall, I also exercise using my arms. And what I'll do is I'll push forward with my arms at the same time that I'm trying to walk forward. Now, see, now I'm starting to keep my heel on the floor, but at the last second as I'm moving forward, I'm actually toe-raising my rear foot, even though I'm keeping it on the floor. So, like I said, I'll use my hands to force against the water as I'm moving forward. <coughs> it exercises my shoulders and my arms a little bit, but more importantly, it puts resistance on the walking to make it even a little bit more challenging because walking through this deep of water is never, you know, I'm not carrying the weight which is good for my knees and it's good for a lot of stuff. But there is a actual, I guess, uh, resistance factor. Wow, it's getting bright out here. I can't even see myself in the, in the camera. I don't know if this is affecting it or not. But now, it would be interesting to know how people feel about this and whether or not I'm doing the right thing. If you all think I'm not doing the right thing, it's the best I can do, so I'm probably going to keep doing it anyway. Right now, it's it seems to be the thing for me to be doing. So as I get more and more agile and, and more and more... Uh, able to walk. Oh, by the way, when I do walk, I try to go to malls. I try to go to big stores. You know, if you go to a store like Go Wholesale and you just walk up and down every aisle, my God, that's a big place. So is Macro. If you go to the, the malls, and they have so many of them here in Thailand, and they have amazing, they got, in Bangkok, they got malls where they've spent multi-billion dollars to build a shopping mall. What's in it? Everything. Want to buy a Maserati? You can find the Maserati store in the mall. You want to buy a Porsche? You can find a Porsche store in the mall. You want to buy a computer? You can find that in the mall. You want to buy some little knickknack? You can find that in the mall. You want to get a great meal of grilled duck for a dollar and a quarter, you can find that in the mall. So you can go to the malls and walk inside in the malls because the one thing that's difficult about Thailand that I really wish would improve, and it's horrible in Bangkok, it's better here in Pattaya and Jam Tiam along Beach Road. In Pattaya and Jam Tiam Beach, they are spending a boatload of bot. Ha <laughs> ha, you like that little boatload of bot bullshit? Okay, they spend a boatload of bot, and they are improving the sidewalks and improving the streets. Of course, now you have to put up with the construction. My friend Chad, he's getting ready to move. He wants to move to a new place because he lives on John TM Beach Road in a condo. And they're going to be doing two years worth of construction down there to try and make it better. And uh, I got off topic. The sidewalks here in Thailand, for the most part, they are so uneven. They build a lot of them with these paver stones and when they put the paver stones in 
I don't think they were real concerned about how well the foundation was under the paver stones. So what you end up happening, get happening is these paver stones get uneven and there'll be one stone will be two inches higher in elevation than the previous stone. And they'll be tilted where the left side's up two inches and the right side's down. And people have told me, young people, if you watch some videos from Thailand, have said walking these sidewalks is just flat dangerous. Uh, young guys in their 20s and 30s have tripped and fall, f fell. And, uh, you yeah, know, they're in their 30s, so it didn't hurt them too bad. But you can get hurt just walking. Uh, that's one of the reasons I gave up drinking down, down, uh, when I lived in Bangkok near Soy Cowboy. I, I said, walking home, my God, if you do get buzzed, if you were to get buzzed, which I hardly ever do, but if you were, uh, you better be paying attention when you walk home or you'll trip and fall and hurt yourself. And you know, to all us old folks here, more people over the age of 65 who fall and break their hip, the majority of them, the majority of the people worldwide over the age of 65 who fall and break a hip die within a year. That's a sad statistic. So it's not something that you want to be. And the heavier you are eating the sad American diet, uh, if you're a carnivore, which I think the vast majority of humans in the world are carnivores. But I also believe that there is a minority of people in the world who when young can exist quite comfortably as an omnivore or a herbivore. And uh, some people, some people confuse, I think, being a herbivore and eating a vegan diet as being healthy because they're not getting fat and they're looking thin and everything. But how much inflammation do they have? How much is inside their body is just inflammation? Uh, I had a good friend of mine, died a few years back. He was my high school electronics teacher. And uh, we're just talking here. His name was John. And he became my friend for my God, 50 years, I guess, from the time I was in high school. Uh, when I lived in Las Vegas during like 2012, uh, he would come out every year, him and his wife, Wendy, and, and we would see him and we would enjoy their company. And he became a lifelong friend. Well, he was thin till the day he died. And he ate whatever he wanted to eat. He consumed vast amounts of coffee. My God, he used to own an electronics business. And he had this big old bun, B-U-N-N, -N, coffee maker. The kind you used to see at the old-fashioned diners where they had two pots. And one pot would be sitting there with coffee warm, sitting on a plate. Uh, in the coffee maker, and the other one would be sitting on a plate on the right side, one on the left side, and then when you wanted to make a new pot of coffee, you put it on the plate in the middle. And he had this bun, and he had professional coffee service come into his place and bring the coffee and service his coffee machine. And he didn't have a very expensive business, but 
his coffee was so important to him because he drank like three pots a day. He just he started drinking coffee from the second he woke up, and and he never stopped at midnight. He just drank coffee, and he was skinny as a rail, his whole life. He never worried about eating anything. Now I don't know whether he was a carnivore, herbivore, omnivore. He never cared about it because being overweight never affected him. Now he ended up losing most of his eyesight and he didn't have the best health in the world when he got older. How much of that was due to bad diet and inflammation? Perhaps the fact that he had high metabolism and no matter what he ate, he burned through it. But then again, he also smoked a lot. At least he did in the early days. I don't know about the later days. Uh, I forget whether he still was smoking in the later days or not, but it wasn't seeming to bother him. Seems like we got somebody's work truck needs uh, needs a muffler. That's I gotta go. Thanks for watching. That's all, folks.